Squatters are taking over houses across America and the cops are powerless to stop it. We are seeing an utter explosion in illegal squatting across America where people are losing their homes to trespassers who end up staying there as long as six to 12 months before they get kicked out. A situation that just occurred in Georgia. Squatters just took over a Georgia man's home while he was caring for his sick wife, and now he can't evict them. This is the man, Paul Callens, who owned the house that he no longer has access to, and this is a picture of the squatters invading the house. He's saying that he has to now go through the court system, and that could take at least 60 to 90 days to get control of his home. And ultimately, this is something that should scare anyone out there that cares about property rights, that's a homeowner, or a real estate investor because if you have a house that's being left vacant for even a couple weeks, what we're seeing across America is that people who are professional criminals are taking that as an opportunity to invade, set up shop, change the locks, and the cops often can't do anything because what these squatters do is actually somewhat ingenious. They present a fake lease to the cops when they come, and the cops have no way of verifying on their own if this lease is real or fake, so it ends up becoming a civil matter and going to the courts. However, in some cases, this situation gets even worse if you're a homeowner. Like in New York, where a homeowner was actually arrested after changing the locks on alleged squatters. Take a look at this clip from ABC News 7 in New York. I don't know the law. Yeah, there's laws. You shouldn't be trying to steal my house. Yes, you are. So that's the woman who owns the house, and that's the alleged squatter. ABC 7 caught this on camera, but take a look at actually what happened next. Cops come in, and then what these cops do is arrest Odell, the homeowner. Odell, you're being arrested right now? I'm being arrested. For what? For being in my own home. It's and not, and where's your lease? She's fighting the house. It's not her house anymore. My deed That's is current and legal. Right. Arrested for unlawful eviction. She changed the locks on a man who claims he lives there. And the way that New York City handles this is so long as the squatter shows a lease, this becomes a civil matter that has to go into court and be processed as a regular eviction, which is absolutely crazy and has got to scare any homeowner in New York City, in New York State, or across America right now. And this has become such a widespread issue that I actually now know several people who have become victim to squatters. That's right, everyone. Uh, a real estate investor friend of mine, we were recently texting, and he was telling me that his property in Atlanta was invaded by squatters, and it took six months months for the courts to even look at the case and they're still waiting another six months for the police to come in and remove the squatter. So it's been a year uh, that this real estate investor hasn't had access to the house that they were actually planning on renovating and selling to a new home buyer. They can't do that. And if you're like me, everyone, you look at these stories and you're shocked and appalled that this type of thing can actually happen in America a country which prides itself on um, you know, securing property rights for homeowners. I mean, property rights and secure property rights is one of the bedrocks and foundations of our economy and a, a well-functioning economic and financial system. If you don't have secure property rights, what do you have? You have something closer to communism. You have something closer to anarchy. And I think what scares a lot of people when they see these stories is that they think that America is slipping closer into that because this type of thing shouldn't be allowed to happen. And this is a problem, especially problematic in New York City, everyone. Because in New York, it only takes 30 days to gain squatters' rights. Once a squatter has been living in a property for 30 days, property owners must navigate New York City's eviction laws to remove them. Meanwhile, if a squatter has been in permanent possession of a property for 10 years without interruption, they can then become the property's legal owner. And so really we have like two sides to this um, issue of squatting everyone. Two different sides to this squatter dilemma that you gotta understand if you're a homeowner who kind of wants to protect your property and your rights, or if you're an investor who wants to protect your property and your rights. One is um, the more short-term component, which is the fact that there's now people in America who are taking advantage of the short-term tenant rights laws in cities like New York, as well as in Atlanta, where if they move in for 30 days or 60 days, they think that they can drag that out for a year and live rent-free due to the fact that you have to formally evict them. And ultimately, this is actually not squatting. This is trespassing. This is people who are trespassing on a property and taking advantage of loopholes in the legal system to act like they're squatters and have some type of right. However, there's a whole other side to this issue as well, which is the more formal definition of squatting, 
which is when people occupy a property for years and years at a time that isn't their own and eventually gain the right of ownership to that property. This is the more formal definition of squatting that actually every state in America has laws on the books on. And these states all have different thresholds about when someone could gain the right to what's called adverse possession and actually claim ownership to the property, not just stay there for a little while and pretend like they're a tenant, actually claim ownership. And you can see that the minimum amount of time varies by state. So for instance, in Arizona, once a squatter is at the property for three years, they now have a right to claim adverse possession and claim that they own it, with the caveat being that they must have been paying the property taxes for three years. Other states like California have a five-year minimum. Squatter must have paid property taxes during those five years and lived there for five years to claim that they have a right to ownership. A state like Florida has a seven-year minimum with a similar situation. They must occupy for seven years and either pay taxes or hold color of title. A state like New Jersey actually has the longest period. A squatter would need to be in the property for 30 years before claiming that they own it, while a state like Texas only has a five-year minimum going up to 10. So if they have five years with possession and color of title, they can claim ownership. But if it's just residency alone, they can claim ownership at 10 years. And so every state has these books on the laws that if someone lives in a property for multiple years and pays taxes, the property can become their own. And this kind of shocked me the more I dug into it, because again, you know, we're in America, folks, right? Like this is the country that prioritizes property rights, yet every state in America has a law on the books allowing someone to squat on a property and eventually take title to it. How is that even the case? Well, I did some deep dive research and found that these laws actually go back to the late 1700s through the 1800s. And I'm gonna talk more later actually about why these laws exist in the first place because it's really actually very interesting. But before that, I need to show you guys a couple more examples of these uh, squatting news stories, everyone, because it's pretty wild what's happening in America right now. Especially in Beverly Hills out in California where squatters recently took over a Beverly Hills mansion worth millions for five months. This story is absolutely crazy, everyone. Squatters infiltrated a posh Los Angeles enclave by claiming ownership of a vacant mansion. For months, they pretended to have the right to live there and threw elaborate parties. Between October 2023 and February 2024, the group of squatters led by an aspiring actor unlawfully occupied a vacant home in Beverly Hills. You can see a picture of the house here on curb. It's 5,900 square feet. Apparently it was worth around $5 million. They had it listed on the market for sale in September, which is how these squatters knew that it was vacant. What these squatters are doing is they end up throwing parties five nights a week. And they would send invitations and with the idea being to recreate Burning Man in Beverly Hills. And they ended up charging money uh, for people to come here. They would charge $1,500 for a table upstairs, $500 for a table downstairs. So they turned this almost into a business venture, these squatters. And only this highlights how these squatters are not, you know, just random people who are just breaking in high on drugs. Like these people are actually really thinking about what they're doing. They do research about the best ways to infiltrate homes and to get around the legal system. In fact, someone on TikTok recently did a viral TikTok reel telling illegal immigrants how to invade American homes and invoke squatters' rights. This came from a migrant TikToker with 500,000 online following. Apparently, he lives in a suburb of Columbus, Ohio, and said in a recent video that under U.S. law, if a house is not inhabited, we can seize it. He appeared to be referring to adverse possession laws, commonly known as squatters' rights, which also allow unlawful property occupants' rights over the property, even without the owner's consent. His viral video on TikTok talking about this drew more than 3.9 million views. You know, so I think the ultimate question here, everyone, is if you're a homeowner or an investor who wants to protect your property, like, what do you do? Because clearly there's forces and influences that are trying to uh, make this happen, right? And the court system and the cops in many cities and states, they're not able to uh, prevent this from happening. So kind of the onus starts to fall on you as a homeowner and an owner of property to protect your property. And ultimately it seems like the number one kind of situation where we see these squatters get involved is when a house is vacant. That is by far the most common um, situation where the squatters will look on Zillow, they'll look on realtor.com for houses that are for rent very typically or for sale and that appear to be completely vacant might have no furniture in the pictures if it's for sale. If it's for rent, it might have been on the market for three or four months. Then what some of these squatters do is they'll actually like do something like they'll go to the house and put a traffic cone in the driveway 
and come back a week later to see if the traffic cone is still there. They'll do some scouting to confirm if anyone's in the house. And if no one's in the house, that's often when they'll make their move to trespass. So the first thing in kind of preventing this from happening to you would be that if you have a vacant house, maybe it's a second or third home, maybe it's an investment property, maybe you've been on a way on vacation for a month, make sure that you have someone who can check in on the house, right? At least just drive by it, make sure everything looks okay. Um, that would probably be priority number one for making sure that this doesn't happen to you. Priority number two would be um, having some type of video recording system that can catch people in the act of breaking in. Because remember folks, it is still illegal to break into a house. You know, none of these states or cities are saying that that's legal. Where they're getting caught up is the proof that it's a break-in in a trespass. So if you have video evidence of someone breaking into your house, that can clearly be used in the court of law and term it, turn it into a criminal case. So having security cameras, security footage on the front door, in the house, that should help as well. And of course, make sure that you have your house secure, all the doors locked, potentially even an alarm system, things like that can help deter someone from breaking in. But you also have to watch out for some other situations too, folks, if you're a landlord, and that's that you um, buy an investment property and then you get a tenant, and that tenant might end up paying one month of rent and then stop paying rent and then refuse to leave. This is another situation that we see cropping up more and more with illegal squatting. And that's why if you're a landlord, it's definitely smart to do a thorough background check on your tenants and to require them to pay some of the upfront costs before they move into your rental property to prove they're serious about the space and protect you from any unpaid rent or damages. This could include a security deposit. Additionally, you could require rent and employment information. Um, also, having a signed lease is very, very important. And of course, even if you take preventative measures, these type of things can still happen, which is why understanding your local cities and states' rules about trespassing and squatting is very, very important. And the good news is that there are some states right now that are actually taking action to try to stop this from happening. These states include Florida, where lawmakers are passing a bill to revoke squatters' rights and protect property owners. But the key point about this bill is that it's gonna separate the distinction of squatters from tenants. Right now in Florida, squatters are considered tenants in the eyes of the law. However, this bill will kind of draw a difference between that by creating stiff penalties for violators, like a second degree felony for damage to a home and a first degree felony for fraudulently selling or leasing the property. And really what this bill would do is it says anyone is presumed to be a squatter if they can't produce certain documentation like a rent receipt or notarized lease agreement. And so that's the key thing, everyone. This bill in Florida, which is on the governor's desk to be signed, would require a tenant to show a notarized lease which would make it much harder uh, to show a fake lease. In addition, it would require the tenant to show a receipt of paid rent. That increases the burden of proof on the tenant to prove that they're not a squatter, which makes it easier for the owner of the house to reclaim possession of their house without having to go through the civil court and eviction process. Additionally, Georgia is now working on legislation to stop this as well. With a new bill, HB 1017, the Squatter Reform Act, making it clear in Georgia law that squatting is criminal trespassing, making it a police matter, not a civil court case. It asserts that making any fake lease is an additional crime and that there's gonna be no more fraudulent paperwork. If you falsify documents and you get caught, you're gonna serve jail time. Meanwhile, everyone, Alabama is also another state advancing a similar bill. House Bill 182 would give a property owner the ability to have an individual removed by law enforcement within 24 hours of signing a sworn affidavit. So that's good news, everyone. There are some states that are uh, working to close these legal loopholes that make this short-term um, trespassing more viable for people who like to claim that they're squatters. However, there's still a lot of other states in America where this is still an issue. So hopefully more of these states will uh, take it upon themselves to pass similar laws. But back to the original point, everyone. How is it that there are even squatting laws on the books to begin with, right? This was the one thing as I did research for this video that I was really scratching my head about, like why in all the states of America are there laws on the books that uh, show that there's uh, legal squatting, that you can live in a place for five to 10 years and eventually claim ownership to the property. And ultimately this goes back to the 1700s in America. It goes back to the original westward expansion when we had settlers from the Northeast and East Coast pushing into the Midwest and the Western frontier. Back then, you had people who didn't own anything who were expanding into these lands and inhabiting them and often taking land that wasn't theirs and farming it. You know, they would farm plots of land to grow food and, you know, the owner either wouldn't be there or there would be no owner to the land. And eventually, you know, some of these people would want to claim rightful ownership if they were there for long enough. Additionally, there was the Homestead Act 
after 1862, which was a law giving homesteaders a legal way to occupy unclaimed lands. This law was signed by Abraham Lincoln and was first enacted to foster the reallocation of unsettled land in the West. The law applied to U.S. citizens as well as immigrants. It required a five-year commitment during which time the landowner had to build a dwelling and develop or work the 168-acre plot of land. After five years of possibly contributing to the homestead, the applicant could file a request for the deed to the property. And so you know, the original basis of this whole idea of squatting and moving to land that wasn't yours was based on the idea that you would improve it. And it was based on the idea, actually, that there was like lots of land and lots of unclaimed land or lots of abandoned land. Additionally, we saw a lot of squatting occur during the Great Depression in America when we had lots of vacant homes and shanty towns. Uh, we also saw a lot of squatting occur after the great financial crash, after all those foreclosures, particularly in cities like Detroit. You had a lot of vacant houses and people would move into those vacant houses. Some people argue that that's actually not such a bad idea if a whole neighborhood is abandoned to give people an incentive to move in and improve the property and eventually claim that they're the rightful owner. However, that's not the spirit of what most of the people in America are doing right now who claim squatters' rights. By and large, most of these people are taking advantage of legal loopholes to live somewhere rent-free for six to nine months before they get evicted. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comment section below what you think about the squatters' crisis and if it's something that you've actually seen uh, happen in your neighborhood, happen to you or happen to someone you know, I want to hear your feedback in the comments section below.